Hi, boys and girls. Thank you for joining me today, and Merry Christmas. At least I think this is when you'll be watching uh, this story. Thank you for, for joining me today, and I hope that your Christmas is special and that you get to be with family and maybe some friends, who knows, and you had a nice Christmas uh, or you have a nice Christmas meal. And I just hope that, uh, that this is a good time for you because you know that Pastor Joe really likes Christmas. It's a very special time where we learn about kindness to each other and giving gifts, right? And the greatest gift that was ever given was Jesus, who God gave to all of us so he could be born and live a good life and uh, die in our place and make it so that we could live forever. What a wonderful gift that God gave to us. And he wants us to follow that example and give gifts to each other, gifts of kindness, gifts of, of uh, patience, gifts of comfort, uh, just gifts of being around and, and supporting each other and being and just being good to each other, right? And that's what Jesus did, and that was a good example for you and me. So this story that I, I think I've told a long time ago to some of you, I'm not sure, but it's one of my favorite stories. So I, uh, I got my, my notes out so that I could make sure I get the story right, okay? This one I'm calling No Room at the Inn with a question mark at the end, and hopefully you'll see why. Did you see the picture at the beginning of the video, that big, tall hotel? And then did you see the, the old couple that was uh, checking into the, to the hotel there, and they were talking to a young man who was called, the, we would call him the night clerk, you know, the person behind the desk when you go to check in at a hotel, if you've ever gone to one, uh, they are called the clerk. And at nighttime, they call them the night clerk. And that's what this story is about. Now, uh, this story happened many, many years ago uh, in, on the other side of the country in the city of Philadelphia. And that's in the state of Pennsylvania. And that's on the far other side of the country, okay? And, uh, and so it was the middle of the night when this happened. It was actually 1 o'clock in the morning. That's like there's midnight and then go another hour. And that's how late it was at, at night. Now, apparently, there were some conventions going on in that town. There were like three big conventions going on. What conventions are are, are meetings where people come from around the country to go to these meetings and they have to stay somewhere because the meetings last several days uh, in a row. And so they all go to the hotels. All the hotels in town uh, are where the, the people stay, right? And so these hotels were full. All of the hotels for miles around, wherever the conventions were, uh, were full. There was no room at the inn. <laughs> and this elderly couple, like you saw in the picture, they walked into one in the middle of the night because they couldn't find a room anywhere. And they were tired of looking here and there and going from one hotel to another, trying to find a room where they could just spend the night. Well, they walked up to the front desk and they saw this night clerk, this young man, and they asked him, they begged him, do you please, do you please have a room for us? And the night clerk said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, every one of these hotels for miles around, all of the rooms are taken. Uh, there's no room at any of these inns anywhere. And, uh, and so, so I, I wish that I could have a room for you, but I don't. And then he said, but you know, I can't send a nice couple like you out into the cold, and it was raining. I can't send you back out into the cold and, uh, and the rain without uh, uh, having somewhere to stay, especially in the middle of the night at 1 a.m., 1 o'clock in the morning. And so <clears throat> he said, would you perhaps uh, be willing to stay in my hotel room? Because I'll be working here in the, at the desk. You could stay in my hotel room. Well, the, the elderly couple said, oh, we can't do that. We, can, we can't stay in your room. That, that just wouldn't be right for us to take your room. 
uh, he said, I want you to be comfortable for the night and you could just stay in my my room. And he and, and they said, no, 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 we can't. He, and he insisted that they stay in his room. He said, don't worry about me. I'll just be fine. And uh, and so they uh, agreed. The couple agreed to stay in his room. Wasn't that very nice for him to do that for them? Well, the next morning, the, uh, the couple came to uh, the front desk and they had their luggage with them. And uh, the wife stood back while the husband went to pay the bill to the, to, the, uh, to the clerk. And as he went to pay his bill, he thanked the clerk. And he said, you know what? You are the kind of man, the old man said this to the young, young clerk, you're the kind of man who should be the boss of the very best hotel that's built right here in the United States. In the entire country, you should be the manager. You should be in charge of the best hotel in the United States because you've been so kind. Maybe someday, the old man said, I'll build one for you. <laughs> well, the, the young clerk, he kind of smiled at this old man who said he'd build him a, a hotel. And he didn't think much of it, and they said their goodbyes. And time passed by. One year went by. Another year went by. Two years passed. And the clerk had almost forgotten about that, that one night where the people got to stay in his room. Uh, and uh, right about that time, two years later, he received a letter. And it was from the old man. And he read the letter. And the le in the letter, that old man reminded him about that one night. And uh, he said, do you remember when we had nowhere to stay and it was a very full hotel and you let us stay in your room. And the, the young clerk said, yeah, I remember when that happened. And, he, and then he noticed that there, there wasn't just a, a piece of paper in uh, the envelope, you know, the letter. There was something else in the envelope with it. And he pulled it out and he noticed it was a round trip plane ticket to New York. New York was... Uh, uh, it, just north, uh, you know, up on the map in the top right corner of our country. Big, big, big city. New York City in the state of New York. And this was a, a ticket to go up to New York. And the, the, the old man asked the young man in the letter, he asked him to pay them a visit. Well, the young man didn't want to say no to a, a nice trip up to New York City where all the big buildings were and there were many, many people and a lot of fun stuff to do up there, I guess. And so he agreed and he took that ticket and he went up to New York. Now, I can't remember if it was a plane ticket. It might have been a train ticket, but it was a ticket to get him there. And so when he arrived in New York, that old man was there waiting to meet him. And uh, he led this young clerk to the corner of Fifth Avenue and 34th Street. Fifth Avenue and 34th Street. And on that corner, he pointed up at a big, big, brand new building that, that had just been put there. It was a palace. It looked like a palace. It had reddish stone on it, and it had all kinds of fancy decorations, and it went high, high up, very high up into the sky, you might say, right? <clears throat> and the older man then looked at the young clerk, and he said, that is the hotel that I have just built for you to manage. You will be in charge of my new hotel. Can you believe that? You must be joking, the young, the young man said. I can assure you that I am not, the old man said to him. And he had this kind of a smile, like, I knew you would ask me that. But no, I'm not joking. This job is yours if you want it. And you know what that old man's name was? Because it's a, it's a true story. The old man's name was William Waldorf Astor. William Waldorf Astor and the big structure, this big building, magnificent, beautiful building that he had just built, he named kind of after himself and he named it the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. 
And I'll tell you, boys and girls, the Waldorf Astoria was the, the biggest and the best hotel in the entire country. And it's still a very, very expensive place to go. It's very high class. And only the rich people like uh, are able to go there. Well, sometimes people save up their money and they'll go there too. And they've since built uh, that hotel even bigger. In fact, that was the picture. That picture you saw at the front of this video is the, new, the newer built up hotel. Waldorf Astoria. Isn't it beautiful? And that man got to be, that young man got to be the first uh, manager of that hotel. Isn't that something? You see, when we give of ourselves, like that young cl night clerk did, when we give without worrying about being repaid, you know, when, when, when we do good things to other people, when we're kind to other people without worrying about them being kind back or anything, when we do it unselfishly, we can't really see the rewards that are going to come for our having been kind, right? We can't always know how we'll be rewarded for our kindness, but I'll tell you what, in the Bible, Jesus guarantees that we will be repaid in countless blessings, and they may not all look exactly the same as the blessings that we gave to other people, but he says, we will be repaid in countless blessings in our life, in our lifetime, with a, just a better life, or at the very least, if that never seems to happen, we'll be repaid in eternity. We'll enjoy heaven together with Jesus because we followed his example in being kind to other people. And that's what I love about the Christmas season. Isn't it what you love? You know, your parents or, or uh, your friends or your relatives, they love to do good things for you. Your brothers or sisters, they love to get you gifts and give them to, to, to you. And, and you love to do that for other people. That's what the spirit of Christmas is all about, right? And so as you celebrate Christmas, either today when you're watching or any Christmas time, remember, it's all about following Jesus' example, and being kind to other people. You never know what kind of blessings will come your way as a result of it, right? That's our lesson for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, let's pray as we close. Lord in heaven, you are so good to us. What a wonderful Father who gave us your Son, and uh, you gave uh, him to us as a baby in a manger, and he lived a good life to show us what it means to be kind to each other. And thank you for his sacrifice on the cross, which made it possible for us to live forever. And we thank you for these things and pray them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, see you next time. And Merry Christmas. Bye-bye, guys.